Okay, I'm back with the next video, and this time I'll be taking the bike apart further, trying to get it basically down to a frame and hopefully get the engine out. So we'll see how I get on. In the last video, I introduced the bike and explained my plans. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. So anyway, I'll stop talking and I'll get straight into it with the, uh, the next part of the build. Got a bunch of parts through today. Well, I say parts, replacement bits. Obviously, you can see the second hand. Quite hard to get hold of for the bike. I've heard that people saying that they're buying engines just to get hold of cases um, that they've been that's been damaged. Obviously, that paint's going to come off. Um, I think I'll get it either vapor blasted or sandblasted or something. Take that off. And this side, the actual um, clutch side, uh, it's not actually too bad. Needs a little bit of a sand down, a bit of a scuff there, but they'll still tidy up nicely. I'll replace these if I end up coming off, which you know. It's quite likely um, the thing that sticks out the most on there as you can see is that so it'll definitely take some of the brunt so I have got cases for them but they're only plastic ones and they're not particularly great and I don't imagine they're going to offer much protection on there anyway so I've given that a good clean up it has revealed a bit of I could see the scuffs before but you can see them even more now that it's had a bit of a, some of the paint taken off so a bit of a scuff in there it's obviously been in a bit of a slide or scratched off something just need to replace the uh, little roller bearings in there if I can. There's two, one on the bottom piece into there as well. Right, so I'm going to take off these bolts. And may as well take off the uh, sprocket carrier off and get rid of it. Normally I wouldn't do this over the with the disc on the floor, but I'm not asked about this disc because it's going to be getting replaced anyway. I think I might need a longer. <sighs> I do need a longer one. Oh. Oh, two. I think this has got some sort of guard on it. I don't know what the hell that's for with it. No, I don't know what that's for. Anyway, don't need that. Oh yeah, not too bad. Right, for the bin. I've just slackened the front sprocket nut off. Did it, I actually did it before. Obviously you need the rear wheel on to be able to do that. To be able to keep the uh, tension on it. Well, I shouldn't do it. So it's already been off previously, but I'll take it off now. And then I'll chop this chain off and that's that out of the way. Got another brand new sprocket, brand new chain, 525. Five, oh yeah, you can see on them, look, the, the angle of them, they're leaning backwards. So probably time to replace it. Well, I will replace it anyway. Is there my chain brake at all? What is it, Motion Pro one? It's pretty good, this thing. It's been pretty handy. I've done a fair few chains with it. Start winding it through. Right, well, uh, there we go. It's out. A little bit awkward to get out with this, they always are though. Nice and easy. Copper grease on the ends of these, so they're coming off nice and easy. So that's the old pipes off. Anyway, I won't need them. I've got some stainless ones that I bought um, that have been modified to have a bit less, a bit more ground clearance, should I say. Um, and obviously this should be a little bit lighter than this and well, they'll look a bit nicer anyway. Right, so wiring time. I'm really hoping that captures it, but so I'll start by taking this lot off. Smells like gas, I think it's just uh, it's dirt in it. Yeah, let's that bit off. Should be able to unhook that now. Yeah. So my clutch 
foot cable. Pull that choke cable through whilst I'm at it. Where is it? That one. Yeah, yeah. So again, running, running with the other wires between the, those those three, it just goes underneath that, underneath there. But I don't think I'm going to be putting a choke cable back on. I'm just going to use the, the idea of having just a, um, a stupid thing. The idea of just having a tie wrap on the end of the choke cable instead of manually pull it that way when I need it. All right, let's start a piece out of the way. So what I'm going to do is take, I think it's these two, take this off and then these will be able to come out. What I do need to make sure I think is that I get, well, not I think, definitely need to get them on the right way. So I will be labeling them up probably right on one, two, three, four, and then put one, three, four on here as well. So I get the correct colors. One, two, three, four, one. that out and they're labeled up right and left so it should be all okay all right so let's see if we can get this through and that should be this whole left side that can come off now so all that lot off in theory then i think that all that can just be snipped out of the wiring harness and that's that lot gone this cable that's kind of bunched over into this uh, protector is running up there and it runs up to the up to the starter and the right hand side controls so i'll take that lot off next uh, that's the brake switch cable as well so that can come out i don't need that on there either right. push that through between the uh underneath the yoke and the front forks and that's that out of the way so that's the throttle cables for the front and the back. So I'll pull them through again, same thing. Loop through underneath this frame and into there, between the fork. Can that come off? Yeah, I think it can. Right, so I'll take this off and get it out of the way. As far as I know, all, all of uh, like I said, this lock can come off. So I'll disconnect all these at the top, the clocks. Right, so that's all the, oh, we've got the indicators and then different clock, clock instruments. I don't think we'll need any of that. Wrap thing there, come out. Bloody hate these things as well. Ow, there we go. So that's that out, this bit here. Again, I'll probably take these off and just tie wrap things to the to the frames. Ah, okay. So this is all the judging by the fact that they're thicker. They're definitely yeah, it's all the power cables, isn't it? To start it up. Ah, yes. Okay, that's the front end off of it. So that's running to the uh, ignition. Uh, again, I'm not sure what I need to do with this. I'm, I'm assuming, could be wrong, but we'll probably bridge. I'm guessing you'll have to bridge one of them so that it thinks that it's, that the key is always on. And then once you've done that, I'm assuming then once you've got your, uh, the controls on the right hand side, well then obviously it acts as the starter but that should always think it's powered on. Right, so I'm assuming here you can just use a, oh yeah, slightly loose. You can just use a pair of grips and unscrew that. Yep. There we go. So that's the speedo cable. And I won't need that because we're removing this piece, uh, which is the speedo sensor bit. Oh, what, what? In its place, you put in a spacer so that it just bridges the gap. And that's that. Now it should pull out. Yes. There we go. Forever stuck at 14,000. I don't know how you actually change that. I'm guessing you, I'm guessing there's a dodgy way you could wind that back. Well, anyway, I won't. <laughs> all right, so I don't need this pit here, all this frame, because that was just holding on the original fairing. 
I have a race board frame that's going to fit into here, the two bolts that are in there. That just drops out, obviously I'll replace all that and it uh, bolts into somewhere down here. I think it's actually into here, I think. So I'm going to take this off now. All right, I'll slap it off. Right, so I'm on with taking this out now. So that's that piece. And now, how the hell does that come out? Okay, back to the wiring. Um, so I've got as far as this, just pop the fuse box off there. I uh, don't think I'm going to be needing that. I'm just going to unclip the uh, green and the yellow connector over that side. And then just disconnect it all. So unclip this one up the back. I already took this off the other day, so let's just tie wrapped on there for now. Oh, there we go. That's the brains of the unit. There's this one. Okay, buff them off. So they took in there, that took through there, out the way, up the back and into here. I can pull that through. There now, it's those two. So I will need them. And I will need this as well. I think that's the rectifier. Then, ah, right, there we go. So that's that lot all disconnected. It's pretty obvious where that all goes. So that should be able to feed through now. Now the camera died, so I've switched to this one. So on the last one, I was taking out the wiring harness and I disconnected the, there's a ground that goes to the harness there and another ground there that goes to the battery. So both of those come out, they'll need to go back in. Um, I just took those wires there. They're going into the alternator and into the clutch, so they'll have to stay with it attached. So the rest is pretty much out now. And I'm getting to the point where I can start draining the oil on the, the engine and then start thinking about getting this engine out. Time to drain the oil. Spoke too soon, I'm about to say try not to drop the bolt. All right, so I'm draining the front caliper now. I'm gonna start taking off the uh, master cylinder and the caliper. So I'll just get this to all come out. Okay, so there's not much there now. Pulled it through. Right, that should just pop out gently. Yeah, so we've got a little bit in there. No idea when this was changed. So annoyingly, the uh, the master cylinder kit for this is probably the most well, it is the most expensive of all of them. It's nearly forty-eight pound or something like that, just for a couple of seals and placement parts. It's not ideal, but. You need it. <laughs> it's probably everything that's going to come out of there. The rest will be sat inside that caliper. Oh, bloody hell. That was really tight. Yep, so there was quite a bit still left inside. Still like in nice condition though. So they're in the, the age of them. Okay, that's tight for, for what it is. Oh, All right, so I eventually got it to crack. I had to basically turn it round. Didn't really want to do this, but to hold the lever and then put pressure on it. That was ridiculous for them. It doesn't need to be that tight. All right, so I'll take the master cylinder off next. All right, now there's an example of exactly what I didn't want to find in here. And I knew this would happen. You can see it just looks like an oil bolt. And then look at that one, shiny and totally smooth. They stuck that in and basically just cranked it down until it's gone in. And that's why the bars weren't gripping. Uh, the master wasn't gripping on the bars very well. There's just no thread on it, it's totally smooth. Terrible. It's like threading in a bolt into like cheese. If I can sort that out, then I'll put a kit in. If not, I'm gonna be looking for another full, full uh, master cylinder. So I'm going to attach the uh, brake switch from this anyway for now and then start to dismantle the actual piston and stuff that's inside. Bloody dry on there so that could do with a 
lube up anyway. Oh, look at that. Oh, that smells bad. <laughs> And damage it, there you go. God, that's definitely in need of a, of a rebuild. And you do have to get a bit. Oh, there we go. <sighs> Flip great through in there. Right, so it was just a case of it was just almost glued itself. So, yeah, that's definitely in need of a, of a rebuild. It's filthy in there. So, that's what's inside. So obviously you should have that into there and then that piece in the middle. All right, there we go. So it looks like it's like that. Uh, and then that's holding it in. And then it's like that. And that looks like it's sitting into there. And then that's the dust boot that's on it afterwards. So having found the issue with the spark plug, I'm taking the engine out now and taking it to someone I know who does engine buildings and he's going to have a look at it for me and just have a good check over inside. Because the oil is also extremely thick and dirty, we're going to take the sump off as well and give that a clean out and put it back together. So it's going to get a good check over before I start rebuilding it. So I'm going to get the shocks off, try and take this swing arm out take the forks off, wheel out, and then try and lower the bike down onto some wooden blocks underneath, and then try and take the frame away from the engine, leaving the engine in place. That, I've been told, is the easiest way to do this. So I've never done it, so we'll give it a go. All right, so there we go. That wasn't as graceful as I was hoping. No, well, they're not much use to me, those shocks like that. So like we've got a spring and not on the back, so I'm just going to pause this. It's got to lay underneath the bike to do it. All right, time to move the swing arm. So it's the bolt, the nut on either side. I'm hopefully, I'm really hoping this just a case of just winding this down and undoing it without knocking the bike over. Yeah, it's tight, but it's coming in jump. It's a bit too big that. Pull that through. There we go. One swing arm removed. Oh, that stinks. Looks like it could do with a bit more of a grease. I mean, it has some some grease on it, but not a lot, is there? Anyway, get in there now. The next bit will be to trim off the stuff I don't need, so like this, and see if I can get them, get them bearings out of there. Right, what's what's next? I think forks, and so I've already done, done the top. Take the top yoke off, bottom part, and lower it down. Right, I'm seriously hoping the roof can take the weight of the bike as I take the front wheel out. I just need to temporarily hold the bike weight there and then I can drop the shocks out, lower the front down to the to this block and the lift the back up, pull the stand out, lower the back down. I'm hoping it stays put. Well, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Please take the weight off oh, so far. Well, I can't hear any creaking coming from the roof, so I think think we're good. I'll not mess about just in case. And once these are down, yes, just enough room. Two. Okay. That's both pairs out. It doesn't seem too hard heavy.
Oh, there we go. Well, that went fairly smooth. Pretty happy with that. Good thing with this engine is it's got, it's got fins underneath, which makes it pretty stable for staying put. Now that it's on the ground, there's a procedure for taking it out. So it's the, on the S, this is the S model. So it's got this little cradle bit at the front with a crossbar going across there. So you take this bolt first, front engine one, then these two, and then the other two on the other side that allows that to come out. Then it's down here, which allows it to come out. And then it's this bolt and lastly this bolt. And then the bottom piece should come out, which then allows the whole frame to, to be taken away from the opposite side basically leaving the engine on here. Okay, then let's do this. So I've already had these bolts out, so I know there won't be any issues getting them out. Oh, bloody, too much grease on that. <laughs> Half the battle now is gonna be remembering how all this crap goes back together and the sequence in which I've done it. Right, that's the front done anyway. Can these bits out now? So, this one. Be careful now not to rock it too much and tip it, tip it up. All right, there we go. There's two out. I think like I said, that one has a nut, there it is, at the back. All right, so now it's the bottom bolt, which runs through the bracket. And after that, it's this top one, and that's it. Right, don't you fall over on me. And, oh God, that's heavy on my own. <sighs> One engine, I'm quite pleased with that. My garage is in absolute state. Got a bit of sawing to do now. So we'll get rid of this bloody thing, get it off to someone who knows what they're doing. Start stripping that uh, stem bearing out. That's definitely time to do it because that's feeling notchy. So that's going to be good. Uh, take that stand off next at the bottom, start grinding the stuff off here and prepping these to go ready to be powder coated. Yeah, hopefully that's been useful for people watching and not boring with me talking to myself for a couple of hours. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Get tidied up. So I thought now was a good time to end the video. I managed to do quite a bit in that one. Um, pretty pleased how it went. Like I said, it's the first time I'd done it. If you've taken an engine out before, I know it's going to be probably fairly basic for some of you, but for me, it was all new and I learned quite a lot doing this and, and it was quite fun as well. So on the next video, I'll start modifying the frame. I'll start cutting off parts that aren't, aren't necessary and basically taking it from what would have been a standard road frame with all the lugs and parts that, you know, keep things in place um, and chop them off and basically make it nice and minimal, ready for racing with. If I get time, I'll also start taking my front forks apart. Again, another thing I've never done before, so I'll take them apart, clean them up in the ultrasonic cleaner and get them ready to go to be powder coated as well. The plan is to rebuild them myself, but I'll see how I get on first with taking them apart and see how complex it looks.